War. War never changes. Except it totally does, and we're going to see just how much in today's episode of Star Wars Galactic Versus, the series where we put two universes head to head trying to predict which one would come out on top. Now often it's two fictional universes, but today we are dealing with a fictional universe and our own, and we're looking at specifically whether the United States military from the Fallout series pre-war could defeat the current US military. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, isn't this predominantly a Star Wars channel? Well, yes it is, but I do also like to explore some of my other interests, and the Fallout series contains some of my favorite video games of all time, so I figured that this would be a fun episode to add to the series. If you haven't played Fallout before or aren't super familiar with the lore from the series, do not worry, I'm going to cover all of that before I look at the actual matchup. So a few rules here, first we're taking the Fallout universe before the Great War, so before all the nukes were dropped and civilization was essentially reduced to what we see in the Fallout games. Pre-war America from the Fallout universe, which existed up until 2077, is going against the modern United States military. We're going to pretend that both Americas are put next to each other and are engaged in a full-scale war. This episode will have two rounds. We're going to focus more on the first one, which is both sides get to go head-to-head, -head, but without the use of their weapons of mass destruction. So the Fallout universe can still use, for example, the handheld nuclear bomb launchers, but can't drop actual nukes. In the second round, everything goes, both sides can use any weapon at their disposal. So first I'm going to give a brief description of the Fallout universe and more specifically the military forces of the United States at around 2077, and then I'm going to do the actual matchup, talking about how the Fallout universe would compare to our own. So let's talk Fallout, and really there are a few defining moments in the Fallout universe. Probably the most notable one is the Great War, which ended in 2077 with a major nuclear exchange between several world powers. This decimated much of society and wiped out much of the human race. However, even pre-Great War, the Fallout universe was much different than our own, and a lot of this can be tied with an in-universe fascination to nuclear power after the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. With perhaps some minor differences, the Fallout world and the real world appear to be about the same historically until about World War II. The divergence comes after that point, where the Fallout universe focuses most of its technological innovations on nuclear power rather than electronics or other forms of power that we use in the real world. So by 2077, although obviously the Fallout universe is more advanced in time, it's hard to say that the technology is more advanced, rather it's drastically different than what we see in the real world. Military and everyday technology seems to be essentially a satirized version of the 1950s view of the future, as is evident in Fallout's visual style. And this divergence is manifested in everything from cars running on nuclear powers to personal robots being extremely common to computer systems being very large and rudimentary. So while nuclear power is very advanced in the Fallout universe, their electronics are exceedingly basic, although usually very sturdy and the power source, given that they run off nuclear energy, is fairly reliable. Much of this is because the transistor, which is a key technology in electronics, was only developed 10 years before the Great War, when in reality it was developed after World War II. So we see a pretty great difference in sophistication in that area. This tech difference affects everything from civilian technologies to military hardware in a pretty dramatic way, but I'll talk about that more in just a few minutes. Something else which I briefly alluded to earlier is that robotics in the Fallout universe are extremely advanced, so it was not at all uncommon for a family to have a personal robot. It's also worth noting that by 2077, the US population had risen to about 400 million people and they were starting to run out of resources, and this is what actually caused the Great War that led to the nuclear exchange ending much of civilization. With that being said, and with an understanding of the Fallout universe and the reliance on nuclear technology, let us now look at how that would impact the military in this situation. So let's first talk about on the land, and we'll look at weapons, armor, and any other intangibles. So ballistic weapons do still exist in the Fallout universe, and they are very similar to modern weapons. However, we also see things that would be completely impossible in our timeline. For example, portable mini nuke launchers, portable mini guns, things like that. 
Along with being able to harness nuclear technologies, the Fallout universe also makes use of laser and plasma-based weapons, and these are extremely effective against infantry. Most of the people within the US military would have been outfitted with these weapons, with traditional ballistic weapons only really being used in reserve. These weapons would have been more dangerous and more effective, certainly at close range than a modern rifle. However, they miss out on some of the electronic advancements that we would take for granted, so like advanced targeting on scopes, things like that. Also when looking at individual troops, we have advanced protection in the Fallout universe. Most would have been outfitted with at least combat armor. This provides great protection against laser-based weapons, plasma-based weapons, and regular projectiles. It was also very lightweight and likely much more powerful than any real-life armor that we have. Pretty much everyone in the US military would have worn this during battle. In addition to the normal armor, some regiments would have been outfitted with the much more advanced power armor. Power armor is an infantry sized set of mechanized armor which protects the wearer from pretty much all small arms fire along with things like radiation. These suits are very advanced and very very durable and a soldier wearing a power armor is a very serious threat to anyone else on the battlefield especially when wielding as they often did heavy weapons like gatling guns or mini nuke launchers. US soldiers in the Fallout universe would have also most likely had access to the VAT system or the Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System which would have not only provided real time feedback back about their enemies, but help them with aiming and shooting on a pretty substantial level. The point I'm trying to make here is that the infantry in Fallout are very, very strong, but what about the rest of the military? One area of the military which greatly, greatly suffers from a lack of electronic development is the Air Force. Aircraft in the Fallout universe are armed primarily with machine guns, rather than the missiles that we see in the real world. They also seem to be optimized for close combat rather than, again, in the real world where battles can be fought and ended at dozens of kilometers. The most advanced aircraft available to the US military in the Fallout universe would have been the Verdi Bird. However, even this craft is much less advanced than even a standard aircraft that we see in the real world. It would have had pretty heavy weaponry, but again, it would have lacked the key sensors and other equipment that we take for granted. Airplanes and aircraft just generally are on a level drastically behind that of the real world, probably up to 60 or 70 years so. Really that's all due to a severe lack of computer sophistication. Any issues with aircraft may also be worsened by the lack of resources available to the US military at this point, but we'll touch on that later on. Non-infantry ground-based units also seem to suffer from the same limitations as aircraft. While they do pack quite a punch with their weapons, they lack any sort of real sensor packages. We see in Fallout Tactics, for example, that one of the tanks basically matches the kind that the United States was using during World War II. Notably, most ground-based units within the Fallout universe probably would have been powered by nuclear energy, which does provide some benefits, especially around longevity. There are a few more things that I would like to mention here. One is weapons of mass destruction, and the other is robotics. As I've mentioned a couple times, despite issues with electronics in the Fallout universe, robots are still very, very advanced, and personalized robots were even very common. The US military did have robotics divisions, and they would have used robots mostly to support their troops, with things like protectrons taking up arms against enemy soldiers. But we do also see some frontline units, Liberty Prime for example, although most likely the only model of his kind, was meant to fight Chinese forces with little support from the traditional military. Although Liberty Prime technically wasn't active during the war, I am going to give him to the US in this scenario. Finally we have weapons of mass destruction, and in my mind these really fall into two categories, nuclear weapons and orbital weapons. The US in the Fallout universe does make use of orbital weapons platforms. We see some that are outfitted with nuclear bombs, while others like the Archimedes II make use of laser technology. Arguably the payload on these things isn't too insane, not that of a traditional nuclear bomb, and I'm not going to allow it for the first round because I count it as a weapon of mass destruction, but I will allow it for the second. There is also of course nuclear weapons within the Fallout universe, and it's the, probably their most famous technology. Handheld nukes are often used by soldiers on the battlefield. These however obviously don't carry the same yield as an upscaled nuclear bomb, and really, they seem to be a replacement for the real world's use of gunpowder or other explosive technologies. So, just because something is a mini nuke doesn't mean that it's the best weapon around. Certainly, the US military in the real world has access to very, very dangerous battlefield level technologies. When talking about the larger weapons of mass destruction style nuclear bombs, it seems like in the Fallout universe, they are typically, although admittedly not always, delivered by conventional means, and what I mean by that is by being dropped out of an airplane. 
That being said, we do, at times, see the missile-style nuclear bombs. We see it, for example, in the Fallout 4 cinematic trailer. We see it in Fallout 3 at certain points, but I did get the impression while playing and through my research that the bomb style, as dropped from the airplanes, are much more common. Any ICBMs available in the Fallout universe would admittedly be much less effective than any possessed by the real-world US military, as their weapons are dramatically, dramatically improved by advanced electronic technology. With this basic understanding of the Fallout universe, let us now turn to the actual matchup. We'll start with round one in this round again. Just to remind you guys, no weapons of mass destruction are allowed, though things like portable nuke launchers will be. I'm going to avoid a discussion on numbers here because although the US military in the Fallout universe probably did have a small numerical advantage or perhaps even a medium sized one, I think the battle really comes down to the differences in technology. The question is this, what is more effective, weaponry based on electronic advancements or those based on nuclear technology? And I think the answer, at least to me, is pretty clear. The Fallout universe really only has the advantage in one area, and that's infantry battles. That's due to a combination of power armor and other sorts of personal protection systems, and of course, the very powerful infantry-based weaponry that the universe has. Things like mobile missile launchers, and then Gatling lasers, plasma-based weaponry, etc, etc. However, it's my opinion that in any large-scale war fought against the modern-day United States, infantry will actually be only a very small part of the equation. Boots on the ground will always be needed, however much of the fighting nowadays can be fought with drones and with aircraft and with long-range artillery. All these things allow a modern military to do real damage and to do much of the fighting through incredible distances. Drones or other aircraft can do damage to units on the ground from thousands of feet in the air, while air-to-air -air missiles and other similar technologies are effective at dozens of kilometers. Real-world advancements in computing and computers generally also allow things like artillery to fire at incredibly long distance and deliver very powerful payloads accurately. The real United States is also going to have absolute air superiority, just because of the advancements made in fighter jets since World War II, which seems to be where the Fallout universe bases its fighters on. Even something like a vertebrate, which was, during the Great War, considered to be something like a prototype, is heavily outclassed by not only a fighter jet, but by most attack helicopters. Maybe not in pure power, but in things like attack range, maneuverability, speed, etc. Making things worse for the Fallout universe is that during the time of the Great War, and in the decades prior, the military was dealing with serious resource shortages. Even if I ignore that issue and just ignore the logistics of fighting a large-scale war, this would easily go to the modern United States. When I take into account the fact that the modern United States is not dealing with the same sort of resource constraints and hasn't been for the past decades like in the Fallout universe, and that communications technology and logistics generally has taken a large step forward, this becomes a very easy victory for the modern United States. In round 2, where I'm allowing weapons of mass destruction, I think much of the same is true. On the ground, the US military from the Fallout universe may be able to win some battles just because of the advanced infantry weapons and protection systems they have. However, when the nukes start flying, modern technology again gives the real world United States quite a bit of an advantage. Any bombs dropped by conventional means will be only marginally effective, as the bombers in the Fallout universe would be quite slow, and the US military should be able to shoot down many of the planes carrying bombs. Missile technology and anti-missile technology has also developed considerably from the 60s style technology used in the Fallout universe, so many of the ICBMs shot by Fallout America should be able to be stopped by real world America, although undoubtedly some will get through. Without actually having to use planes to deliver their missiles, the real world America should be able to devastate Fallout America relatively quickly. The only issue here is the orbital weapons platforms. However, even during the Great War in the Fallout universe, we saw that after much of the ground command was eliminated, these weapons did become obsolete relatively quickly as they are not automated, instead relying on a personal operator. Modern technology may struggle against weapon platforms, I'm not sure whether anything in the US military arsenal would be able to take them out, perhaps some sort of intercontinental ballistic missile with advanced targeting, I'm really not sure. Still, I am quite confident that, as it was during the Great War, the real United States should be able to take out enough key operators in Fallout United States to make these weapons not as useful. So in my mind this battle comes down in the same way that round 1 does. The Fallout universe can hit very hard, but it lacks the speed and the range 
of a modern military. So for that reason, I give round two, as I did round one, to the real world United States. However, I will say that is just my opinion. Let me know yours by voting right now in the upper right hand corner, and also by voicing your opinion in the comments section. Did I miss something with either the Fallout universe or the real world military that could have swayed this battle, or did I do a good job? Let me know this, along with your suggestion for future battles, down in the comments section. If you guys didn't enjoy this because it wasn't a Star Wars video, tune in this week and got lots of fun stuff coming your way, including some traditional versus episodes, perhaps a top 5, and maybe even a lore video. Also let me know which one of these types of videos you would like to see next. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys, if you want to get further involved in the channel, don't forget to check out the Discord and follow me on Twitter. Links for all of that in the description. Until next time guys, may the force be with you.